So recently I've been spending some time getting my application ready for a production. Uh, so in this video, I just wanted to go over kind of a few things that might already be obvious to a lot of people, uh, but a few things that you want in place before you ship your GoWeb application to production. Um, so let's just jump straight into that really. Uh, so the first thing is just making sure you're actually gracefully shutting down your server. Now, essentially, when you get a signal into your program, you don't want kind of any outgoing HTTP requests to just finish, you know, or just stop. You want to gracefully handle shutting down your server. Um, so how you do so uh, is something like this, right? So you're obviously listening for your shutdown signal. Um, you then have something like a shutdown contact with a timeout. Uh, and you want to utilize the shutdown method on the HTTP server. You want to make sure that any kind of long requests that might be streaming data back to a client are timed out. Um, and any other requests are kind of gracefully shut down. So i.e. the server will wait for them to finish before the, uh, the program can be shut down, right? And kind of continuing on from that topic, um, most Go programs, or in my case at least, uh, you might have some background tasks that are running on your program, right? So for example, I have this task queue, which essentially um, I can fire different tasks into, uh, like for example, go and send an email or go and process an event. And you wanna make sure that obviously when your program is stopped, that all of these tasks get to finish successfully. Uh, if you don't, uh, obviously any tasks that are in those queues will just go missing and they'll never be processed, which could lead to obviously missing data in production um, which obviously just is never a good thing, right? So uh, making sure background tasks are kind of successfully shut down and likewise making sure your server is shut down, very important, especially if you're deploying a lot to your server. Obviously, you know, the binary will have to stop. It will get a signal. You do want you do want to make sure that essentially you're handling these cases. Um, kind of moving on from that, uh, this probably is very obvious to kind of any engineer that's already done any kind of production deployments, but... Just making sure that every, obviously any sensitive keys like environment um like values for secrets etc are obviously passed in as an environment variable likewise other configs like your logger and environment etc um how i do this is just a simple package where i can have some default value set as you can see and then also methods for you know setting is a value required if the value is required i just panic so don't start the program because i need this value to be able to do that um, so yeah, just having your environment variables obviously set up and then kind of likewise with your logger, right? In production, you might only care about kind of error, error level logs or warnings. In uh, development your, or staging, you might want to lower that to be more verbose. Um, when I first deploy this application, I will actually have this slightly more verbose just so I have a bit more control and see how things are working. And then when I know everything's kind of fine, I will lower those log levels and just have things like warnings and um, errors being outputted. Um, again, following on from that, in production, I have my logs written to a log file. Now, kind of continuing on on the HTTP server related stuff, uh, it's just making sure you have things like secure cookies being set. Um, obviously, this will just protect you against specific attacks related to cookies, um, you know, cross site scripting, etc. Just want to make sure that yeah your your cookies are set to um, secure. You have the other correct config value set like same site, HTTP only, etc. Uh, just making sure that there's some protection there on your cookies um, if you're using them, uh, and also just obviously having a secure HTTPS server as well is very important for a production app. So continuing on from the HTTP theme stuff, you'll need to do is ideally you'll want some type of basic rate limiting on your server. Now, obviously, you don't just want your server completely open for the same user to continuously hammer and use up resources. So some basic uh, rate limiting, definitely worthwhile to have in there before you go to production. Um, just something that will block someone, you know, and uh, help protect your resources on your server, essentially, right? Um, and likewise, uh, there's a couple other middlewares here, just basic ones. Obviously, a recoverer, quite important. Um, if your you know, you know, if an endpoint has a panic in it, you don't want your entire binary to go down. Um, you'll probably want the server to stay up as well, right? So, um, having a simple recover in there that will just kind of return a 500 server error, recover the HTTP server, definitely worth just making sure you've got in there uh, on production. Uh, I'm going to mention tests here as well. So, I built a lot of the early code on this application uh, without a lot of tests and 
one of the things I've been focusing on before I've gone to prod is just making sure you have unit tests in here to cover you know cases that you might not cover from manually testing so for example you can see in this file here just some simple data validation um, and then kind of your happy paths um, so realistically speaking you kind of just want enough coverage to be confident in your code before you're deploying it to prod obviously uh, so just making sure any core business logic is covered or you know as much coverage as you can get in there um, definitely worthwhile throwing in uh, like I say you won't notice specific errors for your UI for example but you can you can get those edge cases in there through unit testing uh, and to follow on from that also some integration testing so if you're writing your SQL queries uh, especially if you're doing it this way so I write all my SQL queries in raw SQL in Go so obviously there's no type safety on these queries they're just strings right uh, there's certain linting and stuff that will be that will happen on these queries but you won't really know for sure unless either you're testing them through your UI um, or your you have some integration tests right so just making sure you have some integration tests in place for example this one just spins up a uh, in memory database and then runs these tests uh, like go and find and add something to a repositories um, etc is definitely worthwhile getting in there one other little thing I'm gonna add as well uh, I don't think I've got an example in this project because I it's a UI essentially it's full stack go rather than an API but it's just making sure that you're uh, not exposing database errors to your client right or any kind of specific server-side errors that could give an attacker um, you know insights into how your application is built or you know just errors that aren't supposed to be on a client making sure that you're not returning a SQL error from an API endpoint you know those kind of cases having them in there um, being stripped out is you know definitely worth getting in there before you go to prod so one more thing to do before you get to prod is ideally have some element of caching in your system now this will obviously just take off some resource load from your server um, and again I don't necessarily have a great example in this project yet because there's not too much to cache. The only thing that I've got cache wise is some static asset caching, uh, which actually is just using the serve files embedded system, um, which does some caching stuff for you under the hood. But where you can, you should be reviewing obviously what could be cached, what, what data is relatively stale that's not changing often that could be cached, for example. Those kind of scenarios uh, are definitely worth looking into before you're going to prod. Um, but yeah, in short, there's more stuff you can have in there. Obviously, you'll want metrics. You want to be able to, um, you know, observe your server, uh, monitor it, etc. But um, for this video, yeah, that's kind of it, right? Graceful shutdowns, good environment variables, log levels, um, rate limiting, um, integration tests, unit tests, all great things to get into before you go to prod. Um, I might make another video on this. To go over some other things you probably want in there before you go to prod but these are the things i've just touched on recently to get to prod um, and i thought i'd cover that in this video so drop a like if it's helped uh, also subscribe nearly at six thousand subscribers so if the video has been helpful at all then please do subscribe um, and see you all in the next video